Pete Davidson, Pete's dad, never got to see him on SNL because he passed away on 9-11. Pete's mom has never seen him on SNL because she blinks. Is Pete white? Is he black? Ann Coulter needs to know if she can decide if she hates him. <laughs> Pete, I actually thought you were black, but I guess you just have your uh, dad's ashy skin. Whoa, Macaulay Culkin looks worse than I thought. <laughs> David, thanks for taking time away from waiting for Sandler to write Grown Ups 3 to be here. David Spade's assistant once tried to kill him in his sleep, and the world was shocked to find out you could afford an assistant. <laughs> Pete Davidson's ugly. <laughs> He's actually going on his third year of SNL. It's been a while since I've been there, of course, but uh, you gotta help me out now. Is it the fourth year that they finally let you see an orthodontist? <laughs> Jacked up teeth! <laughs> Fix that shit! Jimmy Carr's got better teeth than he's British! <laughs> Rob Riggle is here. I actually really love Rob Riggle. Rob, yeah, Rob was, uh, Rob was a Marine. The few, the proud, which also describes his fans. Now look at this little nugget, Pete Davidson. It's hard to recognize him when he's not on SNL or on an adventure with the man in the yellow hat. Jewel's here, Jewel, uh, I won't make fun of you yet, uh, cause I wanna give everyone at home time to Google who you are. Um, <laughs> my mom really wanted me to get you to sign this. Uh, I, uh, I don't know what the f it is. If it's a phone, it's broken, but uh, she'd really appreciate if you could sign this. My mom came here to see you, so uh, yeah. <laughs> Pete Davidson's here. I'm appalled that people would come here and make jokes about the sacrifice Pete's heroic father made on 9-11. This is not the roast of Pete Davidson's father. That was in 2001. Oh, that was dope. Wow. Jimmy Carr is here. When I first met Jimmy Carr, I thought, wow, Jeff Dunham's puppets are getting amazing. <laughs> Jimmy, you look like a butler in a haunted mansion. I just met this guy, Pete Davidson, backstage before the show, a great guy. He asked to take a picture with me, and I didn't even realize he was one of the comedians. I told him, don't give up, kid. Whatever disease you have, you can beat it. <laughs> Peyton Manning's here. I f***ing love Peyton Manning. He's the shit. Peyton... Peyton looks like if football players evolved to no longer need helmets. <laughs> no, seriously, Peyton, I love all of your work, especially when I saw you in the Goonies yelling, Hey! A Super Bowl is also what Peyton's mom had to cut his hair with as a child. Pete Davidson. Yeah, good to have you here tonight. You know, <laughs> as he talks about in his stand-up and everywhere else, uh, he lost his father on 9-11. Pete, your performance tonight was a fitting tribute to your dad because it was like watching a third plane hit the World Trade Center. No, really, I actually, I do think you're going to be the next Adam Sandler. And I knew it the minute I saw David Spade blowing you before the show. <laughs> Let's hear it for Rob Lowe, okay? Right? <laughs> Rob Lowe. Or as gonorrhea doctors call him, patient zero. <laughs> People call Rob Lowe a bad actor, but that's only because they never saw him tell his wife he didn't f that nanny. Um, Rob has two beautiful kids here, not his children, they're just guaranteed in his contract. 
Rob was the first male spokesperson for the Lee National Denim Day, which raises millions of dollars for breast cancer research. You know, that's a great thing. It's a disease. Yeah. It's a disease that his mother, his grandmother, and great grandmother suffered from. But you still f a 16 year old girl in 1988. <laughs> It doesn't change anything. You still did that. I'm coming for you. I once thought Pete Davidson was just like Obama, biracial goofball who ruined a once beloved institution, but it turns out I was wrong. Pete's not biracial. <laughs> Good one. Ann Coulter is here, everybody. Ann Coulter, if you're here, who's scaring the crows away from our crops? <laughs> You know, Anne describes herself as a polemicist, but most people call her a c <laughs> You know, last year we had Martha Stewart, who sells sheets, and now we have Ann Coulter, who cuts eye holes in them. Our first roaster is Pete Davison. Now, he's the newest member of Saturday Night Live. This introduction is way longer than his Wikipedia page. <laughs> Guy from New York, it's Pete Davidson. Thank you. It's an honor to be at a roast hosted by Shaq's dick. <laughs> wow, wow, Ludacris and Snoop Dogg are here. If I was 38, I'd be freaking out right now. Uh, Kev, I loved you as Black Annie. You was so good. It's good to see Comedy Central diversifying his talent with whatever race Pete Davidson is. Uh, you just look real, you're just real vague, man. You have a weird, vague-ass face, and I don't like it. I don't like your face at all, you know? You seem like a nice person, but when I talk to you, I don't have fun. Uh, <laughs> Pete, Pete has got a lot going on. Pete, I don't know how you can juggle SNL, stand-up, and Lauren Michaels' balls in your mouth all at the same time. An amazing multitasker Pete Davidson is. Hannibal Burris is here, everybody, Hannibal. <laughs> Hannibal, of course, is famous for exposing Bill Cosby, right, and only for exposing Bill Cosby. <laughs> no, he deserved it, though. Bill Cosby hurt those women without ever caring about the consequences. That Hannibal Burris would become famous. <laughs> Look at all these scrubs on the stage. Hannibal, Natasha, Pete Davidson. I haven't seen a more disappointing lineup since the last Lakers game. <laughs> hey, come on, let's hear it for Shaq. All right? Thanks for being here and taking a break from throwing barrels at Super Mario. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, what? <laughs> Please don't eat me. Uh, <laughs> I'm so afraid he's so big. Uh, one of the many nicknames that Shaq has is Superman, right? And much like Superman, he pretends to be a reporter and has never met his real father. <laughs> no, 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 no. Shaq is cool, though. Shaq has shattered eight backboards and 79 cervixes. Avoided the usual, uh, I, I guess you could say, former childhood mistakes. You know, he hasn't had a sex tape. That's good for you. Um, he hasn't killed anyone. You haven't bought a monkey. Oh, shit, you did. You bought a monkey. <laughs> and you abandoned a monkey in Germany. What the f was that? Like, you abandoned a monkey in Germany. That was a privileged Beverly Hills monkey. You showed them your lifestyle, and then, then you dropped them off in Germany? Now that monkey's turned out in the goddamn German zoo sucking rhino dick because of your bad decision. 
Not about the monkey tonight, it's about you, Justin. What I want you to do, I want you to sit back, relax, because it's going to be a great night, man. Not for you, for everybody else. We're going to have a blast. When we were looking for a roast master, we called Jamie Foxx, uh, Chris Rock, and they both couldn't do it. Um, then I had a great idea. Let's call Kevin Hart and see if he has Dave Chappelle's number. <laughs> no, I have huge... <laughs> he didn't have it. He didn't have it. Kevin, you were awesome tonight. I have huge respect for Kevin Hart. Kevin loves seeing himself on the big screen. And for him, that's an iPad mini. <laughs> Sorry. Kevin is so short, he calls Lil Wayne, Wayne. <laughs> uh, I love Kevin Hart's career plan. Do everything Martin Lawrence did, only shittier. <laughs> Let's get to the reason I'm here tonight, which is to give Justin Bieber some tips to use when he inevitably ends up in prison. <laughs> I've been in lockup, and you wouldn't last a week, so pay attention. The first thing you'll need is a shank. I made mine out of a pintail comb and a pack of gum. <laughs> I'll show you how later. It's so simple. I found Bubblicious works best, and it's so much fun to say. <laughs> you see, when I did my stretch, all the hood rats on my cell block wanted to break off a piece of Martha Stewart's ass, so I decided some bitch needed to get got. <laughs> I walked into the chow hall, picked out the biggest bull dyke, and I stuck her. From then on, prison was easier than making blueberry scones. <laughs> Shaq, I hope your mom doesn't still hold a grudge. <laughs> Justin, before I go, here's my final piece of advice. You need to settle down, bring some balance into your life. Find yourself the right gal, but she'll have to be someone on your level, someone powerful and famous and rich. Someone you can smoke a joint with or indulge in the occasional three-way. I'm talking about a playa in the boardroom and a freak in the bedroom. So, Justin, my final piece of advice is call me or, <laughs> or not. I'm out of it. Martha, thanks for coming. I know that's probably something you don't do much of anymore. <laughs> Justin Bieber, everybody. Seems like only yesterday you were discovered on YouTube. Time flies when you're a piece of shit. <laughs> Justin, you've been on Ellen more than a pussy juice mustache. <laughs> Mine was better ludicrous. Justin was born to a teenage single mom. No wonder he's got moves. He was in the womb dodging a coat hanger. <laughs> Justin, Selena Gomez had to f you. She is literally the least lucky Selena in all of entertainment history. <laughs> no, Justin. You're so successful, you're so rich. You're like our Beatles. Um, not the band, the bugs that live in shit. So. Uh, Natasha Leggero. This is my first time seeing you perform. You were really great, even though you didn't shoot out a single ping pong ball like Snoop promised. <laughs> now, as many of you know, I'm a police detective in the city of Miami. So Justin, as a police officer of the law, I'm gonna give it to you straight, which I know will be a new experience for you. I got a question, Justin. What kind of bitch eggs his neighbor's house? You caused $20,000 in damages. Imagine the damage you would have caused if you threw like a boy. <laughs> and what are you doing dropping 75 Gs in the Miami strip club? I heard the DJ play one of your songs and the dancers complained their pussies were drying up. <laughs> Justin, as a father of six, you gotta straighten up, son. 
You know, last year you were ranked the fifth most hated person of all time. Kim Jong-un didn't even score that low. <laughs> and he uses your music to torture people. <laughs> but thanks to that music, Justin is worth over $200 million. And in prison, four packs of cools. <laughs> Justin got a tattoo of Jesus on his calf. Why you gotta bring Jesus in your mess? That man has suffered enough. Of course, I had to have one of my favorite people in the world here tonight, Shaquille O'Neal. Thanks for coming, man. I love you, dude, but how in 19 seasons have you only made one three-pointer? I've hit more pedestrians with my car. It's time to talk about the bitch of the hour. Justin, leave it to Bieber. Justin's life changed when Usher heard one of his songs and liked it, which only goes to prove that Usher ain't black. <laughs> now, Justin, you released so many horrible and unwatchable videos, you should change your name to Vanilla Isis. Oh. Now, most <laughs> like myself, we go a little crazy when we get famous. Buy some dope cars, <laughs> some bad bitches, you bought a monkey. <laughs> I mean, that monkey was more embarrassed than the one that started the AIDS epidemic. <laughs> now, when Jay Bird got arrested, he had a big smile in his mug shot. Not because he gangster, because he knows what goes on in jail. <laughs> now, Justin, you so mother pretty. When the inmates saw your mug shot, they swipe right. <laughs> Snoop Doggy Dog, what's up, man? He's way too shy to admit this, but he was actually the Billboard's top male artist the year I was born. <laughs> and look at you now, Snoop. You're one of the 10 dudes at my roast, sitting right next to Martha Stewart and that Hannibal guy. How cool is this? <laughs> so cool. <laughs> you made it. How do you, man? How do you? Now the man of the hour, Justin Bieber, you dainty wigger, you. Uh, Justin Bieber, they say that you roast the ones you love, but I don't like you at all, man. I'm just here because this is a real good opportunity for me. Uh, <laughs> Justin! Oh, you gotta give it up for Justin. He started from the bottom, and he's still a bottom. Uh, I don't like your music, man. I'm not a big fan of it. I listen to some of it. I'm not a fan. I don't like your music. I think it's bad. I think it's bad, man. I don't like it. <laughs> I hate your music, man. I hate your music more than Bill Cosby hates my comedy. Uh... <laughs> Yo, Justin, man. <sighs> well, this has been cool. And despite all those foul things I said, uh, you, you, uh, you seem like a, a sharp businessman, and... Uh, this is real cool that you did this and let all these, these strangers shit on you in front of all these people. And I actually like that song, Confident. That's a good song. I like that song. Uh, and so thanks for letting me do it, and uh, congratulations. Hannibal Burst, thank you so much for being here. I don't really know much about you, but from what I've been hearing, I hope you don't know much about me either. <laughs> Well, let's get to the kid that I've known longer than anybody else up here, Mr. Justin Bieber. He may have just turned 21, but Justin will always be a baby to me, since babies piss everywhere and never know when to shut the f up. <laughs> I remember one day I got this call saying, we want you to collaborate with this little dude who will do anything to get famous. And I was like, great, I love Kevin Hart. <laughs> you know, that's my guy. <laughs> but this dude turned out to be Justin Mother B. And together we dropped a track called Baby. It's got over a billion hits on YouTube. That's because I'm in it. It also has four million dislikes. That's because he's in it. It's like you try to roll like a gangster, man, but you're not tough, Justin. I'm, I'm here to let you know, man. I know you've been on Ellen 14 times. 
You act so much like a pussy on the show, Ellen tried to eat you. I mean, come on. <laughs> but you've become a music icon, like a modern-day Michael Jackson. The only difference is, as Michael got older, he acted whiter. <laughs> Justin Bieber wants to be black so bad, he actually has seen Kevin Hart's movies in theaters, ladies and gentlemen. Ow. Justin, Ow. honestly, I feel bad kicking you while you're down, but since you want to be black, you might as well get used to it, man. <laughs> no, honestly, man, it takes a very brave soul to get up here, and I just want to say, I love you, JB. I'm glad that you did this. This is a beautiful thing. Y'all make some noise for my man, Justin B. Luda, what's up, man? I knew you would show up for me tonight. I feel like I've known you my whole life, but that's just because you look like the Mr. Potato Head I had as a kid. Uh, Luda and I had, uh... <laughs> Luda and I had a lot of hours making the song Baby together. In fact, he told me it was the only baby he ever made on purpose. Look at you, Seth. You've got the, you've got the spray on tan, the, the waxed eyebrows, the, the peck implants, <laughs> halogen teeth, the bleached anus. <laughs> The scrotal tuck, <laughs> nipple enlargement, taint augmentation. <laughs> but I got to admit, I envy you. You've got boatloads of money, three TV shows, and still, even with all the work you've had done, you can walk down the street totally unrecognized. <laughs> Charlie, you claim to have tiger blood, but with all the porn stars you've banged, it's, it's probably just Tiger Woods blood. I'm guessing. <laughs> As you may know, Charlie Sheen is not his birth name. His original Spanish name is Senor Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding aside, though, Carlos Estevez took his dad's name, yes, to gain credibility as an actor. Um, I've seen your films, and you don't really act like a Sheen. But, you know, with your rap sheet and briefcases of coke, you're, you're definitely acting like a Carlos. <laughs> Charlie went on to star in TV and film, both drama and comedy. He was the star of Hot Shots, which is also what Charlie feels when he takes a piss. <laughs> so now, Charlie is a self-contained unit. He is dependent upon no man and no thing, except crack, jack, crank, meth, lewds, Vicodin, blow, acid, uppers, poppers, E, nitrous, dust, hash, and this one boner medicine from Norway. He's the reason a, a dick with cocaine on it is called a sheenus. Wow. Wow. He's still with us, Charlie Sheen. In fact, Charlie just celebrated his 46th birthday. A statement no one thought we would ever hear. Charlie allegedly made a prostitute cry at the Plaza Hotel. I, I want to tell you, though, Charlie, I think she's lying. Because I saw the scene where you got arrested in Wall Street. You, you can't even make yourself cry. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, with all those dangerous jobs shows on TV, like the ones about crab fishing, ice road trucking, why is there no show about the most dangerous job out there, being an escort for Charlie Sheen. <laughs> How long must we wait for the first season of Deadliest Snatch? I'm ready to see that right, right now. Honestly, Charlie, I never thought I would live to see the night that you would live to see this night. I, I really did. <laughs> Seth MacFarlane. The only difference between you and the hooker Charlie locked in the closet is that the hooker eventually came out. Kate Walsh. Why are you here? <laughs> Let me say that it is a thrill to be around the hottest, sexiest woman of 2002. 
Shift McFarlane! <laughs> Come on, everyone, take it easy on Seth. It's gotta be hard for him to do a roast, especially because the Simpsons haven't done it yet. <laughs> If only The Simpsons would wipe its ass in front of Seth MacFarlane, he could learn to do it, too. <laughs> but sadly, Seth MacFarlane's bulky ass is caked in layers of unwiped excrement and shame because The Simpsons haven't done it yet. Gilbert Gottfried. Just watching him perform, you, you can tell he's really got some extra, what's the word, chromosomes. <laughs> and I always seem to look like someone just squirted lemon juice in my eyes. Seth MacFarlane, thank you for not singing. <laughs> and thank you for not telling any jokes. <laughs> I've heard rumors that you like to drink, sometimes maybe a little too much. Now be careful, Seth. You don't want to end up like me. Tall, handsome, rich, and famous all over the world. <laughs> look at you, you handsome son of a bitch. Take off your hair so I can run my fingers through it. You look great. <laughs> you know, David, here's the thing. So, some people call you a washed up, talentless pile of crap. Just, just a terrible human being. I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight, and let's get started <laughs> with the roast. David, your, your acting is like Inception. There's no sense of reality. <laughs> it's impossible to follow what's happening, and midway through, we realize you were unconscious the whole time. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, though, my friend, you will always be Mitch Buchanan from Baywatch to me. This is a show that did for lifeguards what skin cancer did for lifeguards. <laughs> yes, for all his achievements, for all this man's many achievements, it was really Baywatch that made David a global celebrity. David had an important role. An important role on Baywatch. His job was to kill boners. <laughs> but David is more than just a terrible actor. <laughs> he's also a terrible singer. He's, he's the only singer in history whose auto-tune just said, F it. <laughs> now, as you saw from his big entrance, David is hooked on a feeling. The feeling he gets from Six Vicodin. <laughs> Recently, however, he hasn't had time to do another huge singing event. Just like Matt Damon and Ben Affleck haven't had time to write another screenplay. <laughs> or Anderson Cooper hasn't had time to find that special lady. <laughs> and the Hoff is multilingual. They may not know this. He can speak, uh, what, English, Spanish, German, and whatever the f that language was in that cheeseburger video. <laughs> yes, David. My friend, you have done it all. Thank you. You've gone from Baywatch to Death Watch. And I think... <laughs> I think I speak for everybody here when I say that what we remember most of all about you is Pam Anderson's tits. I consider Seth an icon, I do. Like, I got a critique about Seth. It, it's too much Seth. <laughs> See, but I think the problem is with Seth is that he don't have a partner. You know, like the, the South Park guys or Hannah Barbera. <laughs> Hannah once said, I'm bigger than Yogi, and Barbera slapped the shit out of him for saying that. <laughs> Seth needs a Barbera <laughs> to slap him and slap him twice. Yeah. Once to say, hey man, don't forget why people love you. And two, just say you're gay. N no. <laughs> No straight man writes that many show tunes. That's a fact. You may recognize Patrice from his many speaking roles in movies, but only if you've sat in front of him in a theater. Um, 
I know. I know, some of these jokes may come off racist, which is why it's important to remember that Rosa Parks fought so Patrice could take three seats on the bus. During a very dark period in my life, I found inspiration by reading the great epic poet, the Iliad. So, see, Seth, you're not the only person that gotten by by taking ideas from Homer. Tyson has had three marriages. The first two ended in knockouts. I threw He's in a the guy. Towel. I threw in the <laughs> towel. <laughs> Please don't murder me. He's a guy. <laughs> He's a guy who's beaten every opponent he has gone up against except the letter S. <laughs> Martha, thanks for coming. I know that's probably something you don't do much of anymore. <laughs> Let's get to the reason I'm here tonight, which is to give Justin Bieber some tips to use when he inevitably ends up in prison. <laughs> I've been in lockup, and you wouldn't last a week, so pay attention. The first thing you'll need is a shank. I made mine out of a pintail comb and a pack of gum. <laughs> I'll show you how later. It's so simple. I found Bubblicious works best, and it's so much fun to say. You see, when I did my stretch, all the hood rats on my cell block wanted to break off a piece of Martha Stewart's ass, so I decided some bitch needed to get got. I walked into the chow hall, picked out the biggest bull dyke, and I stuck her. From then on, prison was easier than making blueberry scones. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Shaq, Shaq, I hope your mom doesn't still hold a grudge. <laughs> Justin, before I go, here's my final piece of advice. You need to settle down, bring some balance into your life. Find yourself the right gal, but she'll have to be someone on your level, someone powerful and famous and rich. Someone you can smoke a joint with or indulge in the occasional three-way. I'm talking about a playa in the boardroom and a freak in the bedroom. So, Justin, my final piece of advice is call me or... <laughs> over there laughing, Martha Stewart. What you laughing at, huh? <laughs> She's so old, if you look closely at the $100 bill, you can see Martha photobombing Ben Franklin in the background. I believe the bedroom is the most important room in the house, but I don't have to tell you that, Ludacris. You have three kids with three different women. May I suggest pulling out some time and finishing on some fine, highly absorbent Martha Stewart bed linens? <laughs> I had the honor of playing Martha in two separate movies. I did my best, but the only one to truly capture Martha Stewart was the FBI. I remember years ago when I heard there was going to be a movie, a TV movie about me, I thought, oh God, no, because they're always so dreadful. I was really nervous. Well, you can imagine my relief when I found out Sybil Shepherd was going to play me. I thought, Sybil Shepherd, great. No one will see it. <laughs> now, Sybil, isn't it interesting that your career basically ended after that role? As if you'd offended someone, someone with power, <laughs> someone with vast resources and money. Who could cook up such a plan? Who could craft such a scheme? <laughs> It was me, bitch. If anyone can survive in prison, it's someone who can toss a salad. <laughs> That's right. Martha's a real corporate kingpin. She even has her own brand of wine. It's like her boyfriend. It comes in an old box. <laughs> Martha is also a humanitarian. 
when she heard about the kids at the border living in tiny cages. She sent them sewing machines. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Hi, Bruce. I have great respect for our honoree, Bruce Willis, our roast team. Probably because I've never seen any of the movies everybody's talking about. <laughs> Unlike everyone here tonight, I personally have a great appreciation for Bruce's music. I play it at all my parties when it's late and I want everyone to leave immediately. <laughs> Bruce and I are actually neighbors. We're in the same town in Bedford. He has a wonderful house. The interior design is amazing. He wanted everything inside to look mid-century modern, except his new wife. <laughs> I remember when Bruce invited me to their wedding. He hand-delivered the invitation, and I told him, I'll catch the next one. <laughs> Martha Stewart, thank you for being here. <laughs> Seriously, and congratulations on getting that Thai soccer team out of your vagina. <laughs> oh. And into your sweatshops. That's where they are now. Nikki Glaser, you have it all. The name of a professional porn star and the body of an amateur porn star. <laughs> you know, I'm a big supporter of the Me Too movement. But remember, Nikki, Me Too shouldn't just be what a guy says to his friend when he tells him he had sex with Nikki Glaser. <laughs> In case you didn't know, I am Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq Diesel, Superman, Big Aristotle, Big Cactus, Big Galactus, and Martha Stewart's baby daddy. And trust me, Martha know how to work that mother boy, let me tell you. Once you go Shaq, you never go back, ain't that right, Martha? When Shaq bought his house, Shaq, are you listening? I was the first person he called. The house had 13 bedrooms, and I helped convert eight of them into refrigerators. All these rappers on stage, and Martha Stewart has done the most jail time. I taught Snoop that the most important thing in business is diversification. Besides his music career, Snoop now has produced a porn movie. And by the way, Natasha, you were great in that. So I guess that tonight's the second time you've worked with five black guys. <laughs> you know, I do a lot of gardening, but you are without a doubt the dirtiest used up hoe I have ever seen. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. Snoop smoked so much weed that he farted during the commercial. The whole front row got the munchies. The true player in the house tonight, my homeboy, OG, Ice-T, original gangster. You know, Ice-T been in the game so long, they should just call him Ice Age. <laughs> I tried to listen to one of Ice-T songs on the way up here, but I didn't have no cassette player in my car. <laughs> now, when I seen you earlier, I thought you was throwing up gang signs at me, but I found out it was just your arthritis. <laughs> On a pass row, Snoop claimed I wanted to bang him. Police! If I want to bang a skinny black man with braids, I'll call Alicia Keys. <laughs> Lisa is a stone-cold freak. Lisa Larry King, Don King, Rodney King, and Billie Jean King in the Burger King bathroom. I mean, this bitch loves to eat, for real. If you want to Lisa doggy style, all you got to do is put a bowl of food on the floor. Now, Trip. Now, Lisa's had so much sex with so many different brothers, we even gave her rat names for a fat ass. Notorious P.I.G. 
You're gonna like this one, Russell. Ton DMC. <laughs> bust a bust a nut in your face. <laughs> and my favorite, Snoop Chili Dog in your yeah. mouth. I love Snoop. D.O. Double Jizzle. That can't be right. Snoop told me during the break that once he had a DNA test that found he is only 71% black. That true? Unless my math is wrong, if you're 71% black, you're 29% not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta give a shout out to my main man, Larry King in the house. Larry, you know how we is. Larry is cool, but backstage I handed him a joint and he rubbed Ben Gay into it. <laughs> Round of applause for Snoop. Come on, that was hilarious. Snoop, you have butchered the English language in your music. You have two G's in the word dog. You use izzle and fizzle at the end of everything. You speak worse English than Marley Matlin. <laughs> Whitney Cummings. Look at your fine little skinny ass sitting up there. I roll blunts fatter than you but you've been passed around a little bit more. <laughs> but right now, things are popping for Whitney, y'all. Everybody in Hollywood is talking about her, and they all saying the same thing. I think that bitch gave me herpes. <laughs> Snoop Doggy Dog, what's up, man? He's way too shy to admit this, but he was actually the Billboard's top male artist the year I was born. <laughs> and look at you now, Snoop. You're one of the 10 dudes at my row, sitting right next to Martha Stewart and that Hannibal guy. How cool is this? <laughs> so cool. You made it. Proud of you, man. Proud of you. Justin, you released so many horrible and unwatchable videos, you should change your name to Vanilla Isis. Oh. <laughs> now, most like myself, we go a little crazy when we get famous. Buy some dope cars, some bad bitches. <laughs> you bought a monkey. <laughs> I mean, that monkey was more embarrassed than the one that started the AIDS epidemic. <laughs> now, when Jay Bird got arrested, he had a big smile in his mug shot. Not because he gangster, because he knows what goes on in jail. <laughs> now, Justin. You so motherfucking pretty. When the inmates saw your mug shot, they swipe right. <laughs> Snoop used to call himself the D O double G. That's right, the dog. Right, Snoop? Back in the day, the reason why he called himself the dog is because he was a dog with the ladies. It's true. Now he's called the dog because he sleeps all day in the sun spot in the living room floor. Isn't that true? <laughs> That's true, Snoop. That's some real shit, nephew. You look real good. I didn't know the Muppets made motherfucking clothes for a though. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, look, Kevin's from Philadelphia, right? Just like Bill Cosby. And just like Bill Cosby, women can't tell when Kevin's inside of them. <laughs> Snoop, your homie Dr. Dre just became a billionaire last year, and you should be proud. There's not a lot of black billionaires. There's Dr. Dre and the guy that sells you weed. <laughs> I mean, you are a legend, which is a nice way of saying you old as f <laughs> You only do it doggy style now because it's easier on your lower back. We got Ludacris in the mother house. Luda, Luda. I love that song of yours where you said, uh, if you a pimp and you know you don't love them hoes, that shit was tight. But you know who else said that that was tight? Me, 15 years before you did it. <laughs> Stop biting my shit. <laughs> but here's one of Ludacris's original rhymes. There's holes in the room. There's holes in the car. There's holes on the stage. There's holes by the bar. <laughs> Are you a rapper or a Dr. Seuss? Willis, what a career, right? The Fifth Element, The Sixth Sense, The Whole Nine Yards, 12 Monkeys, 
zero Oscars. <laughs> and it's not just action movies that made Bruce a star. He's actually a great dramatic actor, too. Like, I love The Sixth Sense. It's a great movie. And it's a really impressive performance. I don't know how you pretended not to be embarrassed while a 10-year-old kid acted circles around you, <laughs> but you did it. And, uh, and the ending, I did not see that twist coming. I mean, I, I shouldn't spoil it, but I mean, it's been like 20 years. It's so good. Okay, so at the end of The Sixth Sense, Bruce goes back to making shitty movies. <laughs> Bruce Willis is what you get if you isolate the white part of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> we want you to have a good time tonight, but don't get too comfortable up here because later we're gonna be replacing you with Ashton Kutcher. Relax, relax. Bruce gets along with him fine. He was even at Ashton and Demi's wedding. His gift was a toaster and $90 million. <laughs> and so tonight, let's honor one of the three founders of Planet Hollywood. <laughs> not the one who won an Oscar and not the one who became the governor of California, but the one whose agent is just an outgoing message that says he'll take it. Walter Bruce Willis. Joe, I took you under my wing. Tried to make you tough. Tried to make you an action star. Which ain't easy to do with a kid who looks like the bad boy of figure skating. <laughs> Joseph played a younger me in Looper. Couldn't pull it off. There's only one actor who successfully played me. It was Demi Moore. <laughs> and she made a lot more money than you did, sweetheart. Bruce, yes. this is a, honestly a real uh, a big personal moment for me to be here roasting my dead cousin's second favorite action star. <laughs> I know you obviously as the star of every DVD you kind of just find on the street. <laughs> Obviously, you had an amazing action film career until Jason Statham started balding. <laughs> I'm just not familiar with action movies. I don't know, I've never seen a single one of your films consensually. Like, <laughs> it's always what some guy puts on while he's trying to finger me on his roommate's couch. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> A lot of people don't know that Bruce is a very talented musician because he isn't. <laughs> Bruce has also been very active with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which is where they make sick kids meet you, so dying doesn't seem so terrible. <laughs> so cool. Nikki Glaser, I am a big fan. You and Vince Vaughn were great in Wedding Crashers. <laughs> Bruce, you keep making these fucking bombs. But guess what? So does Kim Jong-un. But at least Kim is smart enough not to release his. <laughs> About their saving the world, you can't even save Planet Hollywood. Bruce came up with this whole idea about the Planet Hollywood. You know, he wanted to compete with the hard rock. That was a great idea, wasn't it? So, so anyway, he want all his uh, Hollywood friends to invest. He put in hundreds of thousands of dollars. I put in a lot of damn money. You owe me more money than my family. <laughs> I'm not here to roast you. I'm here to collect, honey. <laughs> it's so great to have the esteemed diplomat Dennis Rodman here. Woo! I don't want to say Dennis is a bad negotiator, but he thinks a shoe deal is when you get two at the same time. <laughs> Dennis, how do you and Kim Jong-un communicate when neither of you speak English? <laughs> Dennis, I know you think it's a big deal that you saved the world, but it's not as much as it's made up to be. Who cares? I've, I've saved the world 18 times. Hi, Bruce. I have great respect for our honoree, Bruce Willis, our roast team. Probably because I've never seen any of the movies everybody's talking about. <laughs> Unlike everyone here tonight, I personally have a great appreciation for Bruce's music. 
I play it at all my parties when it's late and I want everyone to leave immediately. <laughs> Bruce and I are actually neighbors. We're in the same town in Bedford. He has a wonderful house. The interior design is amazing. He wanted everything inside to look mid-century modern, except his new wife. <laughs> I remember when Bruce invited me to their wedding. He hand-delivered the invitation, and I told him, I'll catch the next one. <laughs> if anyone can survive in prison, it's someone who can toss a salad. <laughs> That's right. Martha's a real corporate kingpin. She even has her own brand of wine. It's like her boyfriend. It comes in an old box. <laughs> Martha is also a humanitarian. When she heard about the kids at the border living in tiny cages, she sent them sewing machines. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Bruce Willis, I'm so happy to see you. Gosh, the last time I saw your face, I was shopping for movies at the gas station. <laughs> Moonlighting was considered the first dramedy, a mix of drama and comedy, which is also a good way to describe Bruce's acting style. <laughs> when he does comedy, it seems like drama. And when he does drama, it's hilarious. <laughs> but Hollywood wouldn't be Hollywood if they didn't reward a man for aging into mediocrity. Bruce went on to make 96 movies using just one facial expression. <laughs> Our characters on Moonlighting weren't much of a stretch. I played a former model, which I was, and he played an asshole, <laughs> which he is. <laughs> we actually came very close one time to having sex, but then he whipped it out, started playing with it, and ruined everything. I'm talking about your harmonica. <laughs> Sadly, the stars never aligned for us, and it's never gonna happen now for one obvious reason. You are way too old for me. Civil Shepherd, my oldest friend. There's people I've known longer, but you are my oldest friend. When I got cast in Moonlighting, they picked me over 3,000 other actors because they wanted someone who didn't have a sexual history with Sybil. <laughs> it's so great to be back on TV with you, honey, in another show starring me. <laughs> I'm so, uh, sorry. Well, I really don't understand why you agreed to do this. I mean, if you wanted to be humiliated, clearly we both know you could have just released another singing album. <laughs> Some of you may not know because he bought every copy, but Bruce released an R&B LP back in the 80s. I did some research to find out whose idea this album was. Turns out it was his manager. And by his manager, I mean cocaine. <laughs> Bruce Powell, you've done some great work recently especially your subtle turn in Wes Anderson's Moonrise Kingdom. Love that film. Yeah. The story of two fifth graders falling in love. Bruce would have fallen in love with a fifth grader if he had met his current wife way back when he was 47. <laughs> I first met Bruce when I was working with his first wife, Demi Moore, in the film A Few Good Men. Yeah. I think it's time everyone knew something about Demi. When she shaved her head, she said it was for her role in the film G.I. Jane. But the truth is, she shaved her head because she loved her husband, Bruce. And he wanted to <laughs> his own face. <laughs> and now, Bruce, one of your friends and co-stars in Pulp Fiction couldn't be here tonight. So they've asked me to pass along a message from Christopher Walken. They've put it up here for me. Here it is. Hi, Bruce. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't attend your funeral. <laughs> I did want to say I've always been a fan 
particularly your work in the film 12 Monkeys. <laughs> sure. I was disappointed that you did not portray a monkey. <laughs> but you gave a beautifully nuanced performance, reminiscent of a monkey who poops in his hands <laughs> and then throws it in your face. <laughs> Mostly, though, I wanted to take this opportunity to publicly thank you for creating my favorite restaurant, Planet Hollywood. <laughs> if I'm honest, it's also my favorite planet. <laughs> thank you, Bruce Willis, for having the vision and the courage to ask, hi, who wouldn't want to eat $40 potato skins in a booth next to the hat from Billy Bathgate? Kevin Pollack, welcome to the party, pal. You owe your whole career to the guys you impersonate. You've made more money doing Schwarzenegger than his maid. And not to mention, you're better at cleaning houses. I am here to do a deep dissection of how the bartender from New Jersey became such a big titty of a global movie star. <laughs> Good reviews in The New Yorker and Oscar nominations that, that you lose to the farmer's insurance pitchman, J.K. Simmons. <laughs> they don't... Those things are great, but they don't buy you half of Idaho, do they? No, they do not. I was sitting at a bar with Bruce, and I asked him if he liked the script I'd sent him, and he says, try keeping a marriage together when 22 is still on the menu. <laughs> the f does that mean? I mean, I know what it means, but why say it to that? I... But I fell off my bar stool laughing. I had no idea why. <laughs> I still don't know what he thought of the script, and we're done making the movie. <laughs> By the way, by the way, when Wes Anderson calls him, he and I do Moonrise Kingdom together. And this is true. Everyone in the cast stayed in a little house together. We did our own costumes and makeup. We did our own hair. And we went to set in the van together to save money. Even Bill Murray, but not Bruce <laughs> Willis. <laughs> he rented the Carnegie Mansion next door like a boss. When Wes said, do you think Bruce understands that I really want this to be like a, a repertory theater troupe? I said, shut the f up, you long-haired pussy. That's a f movie star. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's, I try to challenge myself. I look for roles that stretch me and are different, whereas you deliver consistently the same performance, and I mean like the same one every <laughs> time. The last thing Bruce Willis would demand is a better script. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. So the script of his last three films was crinkle your forehead, say short, memorable quip, no more than four words, shoot the gun, duck, repeat the end. It's a half a page long. <laughs> you could learn your lines in the car on the way to the set. You don't, but you could. <laughs> Fight Club was the perfect movie for you. Who doesn't want to watch Ed Norton get punched in the face for about 90 minutes? <laughs> I love you, Ed. I do. But you do have a rep in this town for being, you know, hard to work with. Norton's rubbed more people the wrong way than Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> Sorry. But you were great in the Italian job. An Italian job is also when you titty f Dom Irera. <laughs> we were looking for a roast master. We called Jamie Foxx, uh, Chris Rock, and they both couldn't do it. Um, then I had a great idea. Let's call Kevin Hart and see if he has Dave Chappelle's number. <laughs> no, I have huge... He didn't have it. Kevin, you were awesome tonight. I have huge respect for Kevin Hart. 
Kevin loves seeing himself on the big screen. And for him, that's an iPad mini. <laughs> Sorry. Kevin is so short, he calls Lil Wayne, Wayne. <laughs> uh, I love Kevin Hart's career plan. Do everything Martin Lawrence did, only shittier. It's no secret that Justin wants to be black. Can we all agree on that? Justin loves the black culture. Everybody knows that. My thing is this, Justin, I just want you to come to terms with the fact that you're not gangster. That's Justin's main problem, man. You're not a gangster. Accept that. All right. I mean, come on, Orlando Bloom took a swing at you. That's not gangster, Justin. <laughs> it's not. He's got a perfume called Girlfriend. That's not gangster, Justin. <laughs> You threw eggs at a house. Gangsters don't throw fucking eggs. Snoop, when the last time you threw eggs at somebody's goddamn house? We don't do that. It's not gangster. Justin, Justin sang the N-word on a video in a song that was about killing black people. That's pretty goddamn gangster, Justin. I'm gonna give you that. That's the gangster you get right there. He actually got in a lot of trouble when he got caught saying the N-word on video. That right there, that should make you feel stupid. Reason why I say that, because you know who didn't get caught, Justin? The billion other white people that say the N-word every goddamn day. I'm talking about you, Martha. I know you say it. <laughs> Thankfully, Justin avoided the usual, uh, I, I guess you could say, former childhood mistakes. You know, he hasn't had a sex tape. That's good for you. Um, he hasn't killed anyone. You haven't bought a monkey. Oh, shit, you did. You bought a monkey. <laughs> and you abandoned the monkey in Germany. What the f was that? Like, you abandoned a monkey in Germany. That was a privileged Beverly Hills monkey. You showed them your lifestyle, and then, then you dropped them off in Germany? Now that monkey's turned out in the goddamn German zoo sucking rhino dick because of your bad decision. Thank you, Kevin Hart. It's really great to be here. Oh, there you are. Sitting and listening to you yell your jokes over the last hour is the hardest time I've ever done. <laughs> As we all know, Kevin is one of the biggest movie stars in the business right now, and he deserves it. He struggled for years. When he finally got his first big paycheck, he spent $150,000 on a watch. I forget that term uh, for that. It's not African-American rich. It'll come to me. <laughs> Justin, you know the word. For all the black people that are confused about that old white woman on the couch, that's Martha Stewart. Yeah, right there. That's Martha Stewart right there. Martha, do me a favor and uh, put your ankle bracelet on vibrate so we don't have no problems <laughs> during this show. Kevin, you look like someone put 50 cent in the dryer. <laughs> there is a lot of star power up here. These men combined have made millions in child support payments. <laughs> Kevin, you are everywhere. You know, Kevin's actually gonna be on the next season of Game of Thrones. He's playing Peter Dinklage's shadow. <laughs> Kevin does all of his own stunts. He climbs into his own chair. He climbs out of his own bathtub. He goes up on his wife. You guys may have seen her on Reno 911 as a whore on drugs. If you didn't see that, you may have seen her neighbors as a whore on drugs. Um, everybody, I want you to pull out some Purell for Natasha Leggero. Real shit, nephew, you look real good. I didn't know the Muppets made motherfucking clothes for a though. Know. <laughs> yes, sir. Now look, Kevin's from Philadelphia, right? Just like Bill Cosby. And just like Bill Cosby, women can't tell when Kevin's inside of them. <laughs> My man Snoop Dogg is here, there he is. Yeah. Wait, wait, let me clear something up for all the young people here tonight. Uh, Snoop, Snoop Dogg is a rapper. Uh, 
Yeah, that's my aunt's favorite rapper. You know, Snoop used to call himself the D-O-double-G. That's right, the dog. Right, Snoop? Back in the day, the reason why he called himself the dog is because he was a dog with the ladies. It's true. Now he's called a dog because he sleeps all day in a sun spot in the living room floor. Isn't that true? <laughs> That's true, Snoop. Thank you, Webster. <laughs> what? Kevin is the only celebrity with a star on the yellow brick road. Shit, <laughs> take that dumbass look off your face. You look stupid. you even end up on the roast? That's what I want to know. They must have called up the NBA pregame show and said, you know what? Send us the third funniest guy. <laughs> Wait, he's unavailable? Send us Shaq. Let us get Shaq then. Congrats on all your success, Kevin. I'm sure it's gonna last forever. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing to have Kevin Hart and Shaq here. Is this a roast or is this Tyler Perry's of Mice and Mint? Uh, I love Hannibal. I really do. We know why he's here, okay? Because he's not happy just destroying my childhood hero. <laughs> That's not, that didn't make him feel good enough. No, no, no. He's here to destroy my daughter's childhood hero as well. I just recently got married. That's something to celebrate. And Kevin was at my wedding because I needed a miniature black man on my cake, so thank you for that. The semi-famous rapper. I'm talking about Ludacris. His first album was called Incognito, and his new album, Ludaverse, is hopefully his last. You may not recognize him from the Fast and Furious movies because when he's on screen, even the white people start talking. <laughs> Please welcome one of the most successful rappers of 2001, Ludacris!